Okay, so in this video we now want to work backwards. So the last series of videos have all been about here's the equation sketch, the graph, here's the equation sketch, the graph. Now here's the graph or information about the graph, find the equation. Okay, so we need to think about what kind of function it is, possibly the transformations might help us to find the equation and or um, using some points might help us to find the equation. Alright, so example one, we clearly have the graph of a hyperbola and we can clearly see what the translations are based on the asymptotes. So we've gone to the left by one based on that asymptote and we've gone down by two based on that horizontal asymptote. So therefore our equation is going to be one over, don't quite write this down yet because I'm going to correct something in a minute, one over left one is x plus one, sorry it's not a truncus, it's a hyperbola, x plus one and then down two is minus two. Now, what we haven't, all that's factored in is the asymptotes. It hasn't factored in whether the graph is out here, whether it's nice and close into here, okay? So we also need to think about dilation. So that's gonna be our starting point, okay? We've got a point we can use to find the dilation. I'm just gonna make that a little smaller. I've taken up a lot of the space with that initial equation. Okay, and so now we're going to substitute in the point negative 2, negative 5. That is when x equals negative 2, y equals negative 5. Okay, and we want to solve for a. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That makes that negative 3. And this is a over negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And multiplying both sides by negative 1, a is equal to positive 3. It makes sense that a is positive because our hyperbola is in the top right and bottom left quadrants. If it was down here, we would absolutely have expected to get a negative a value. And so therefore we want to state the equation, which is three over x plus one minus two. Okay, example two, find a possible equation for the graph pictured. So it's clearly a truncus, okay? Um, the reason it says a possible equation is because actually one on x cubed also forms a hyperbola and one on x to the power of five also forms a hyperbola. So um, for now, we're just focused on the one the graphs that we know about, but that's why technically given this information, it's only a possible equation. Um, I should say one on x cubed, I'm not sure that the, sh the graph is still called a hyperbola. I think it is. Um, I think it's about the shape, um, but I just don't want to mislead you if you are looking for more in-depth information. Similarly, the truncus, one on x to the power of four would also produce the same kind of shape as the truncus. So without knowing exactly that it's one on x squared, we can't know that, but given what we've learned in this topic, we just wanna focus on hyperbolas and truncuses. Okay, so we can see again what our translations are. We've gone to the right by three and up by one, and it's a truncus. So it's gonna be x minus, what did I say, right three, minus three all squared and up by one plus one. And again, we need to consider the dilation and that's gonna come from the point. So when X equals one, Y equals 0.5, or I'm gonna write that as half, okay? All right, so when X equals one, Y equals a half. So half equals A over one minus three all squared plus one. Let's subtract one from both sides. So that's negative half. And one minus three is negative two, negative two all squared is four. Multiplying both sides by four is gonna be negative half times four is gonna be negative two. And so therefore our equation is negative two over x minus three all squared plus one. And again, this time we expected a to be negative because we've got a reflected truncus. Example three, the graph pictured has a rule of this form. So it's a square root um, graph. Find the rule for this graph. Okay, I wouldn't focus too much on the general form to start with. Let's just focus on what we know is happening. So this tells us that we've gone to the right by three and down by two. So our equation is gonna be A times, if we go to the right by three, that's X minus three and down by two, that's minus two. Let's use the point to find A and then we'll worry about the general form and the A and H and K, although it doesn't ask for A, H and K. Um, I suspect there's actually a, Oh no. Ah, and that's because we've got the negative, right. So that's why it's, yes, okay. So actually we've got the, also got the reflection in the x-axis. So it is, we know it's negative x minus, th x minus three um, plus uh, minus two for the down two. 
So right by three, reflected in the y-axis, right by three and down by two. Okay, so that allows us to start here. Um, and so that means it is a, if we expand out that bracket under there, that's where we've got three minus x, take away two. So that's why the rule has h minus x, three minus x, take away two. Then let's work out our a, so let's sub in our point to find a. Let's sub the point negative one, six. So y equals six when x is negative one. I'm going to add two, so that's eight equals a. Three minus minus one is three plus one, so that's four. Root four is two. Now again, it's not positive negative root four, it is root four, okay? So it's a positive square root of four, which is two, dividing both sides by two, a is equal to four. And so therefore the equation, and this is where make sure you've read the question, did it ask you to find the values of a, h, and k, or did it ask you to find the rule, okay? So we want to state the final rule, it is going to be 4 times the square root of 3 minus x minus 2. You want to make sure it matches the form that you were given. Okay, So yes, it would be correct to write it as negative x minus 3. But given they've given you a specific form for the um, equation, we want to match that. Okay, So square root of 3 minus x minus 2. If the question asks you to find a, h, and k, which it doesn't, but you would state that a equals 4, h equals 3 and k is negative 2. Okay. All right, example 4. The truncus with equation y equals a on x squared plus k passes through the points negative 2, 5 and 1, 11. Find the values of a and k. Okay, so we don't know anything particular about these points, so we're simply going to sub them into the equation. And when we do that, we're going to end up with two equations with a and k in them, and we can solve for simultaneously for a and k. So y is 5 when x is negative 2, so that's going to be a over negative 2 squared is 4 plus k. I'm going to multiply everything by 4 to get rid of fractions, so that's 20 equals a plus 4k. So that's going to be equation 1. I'll sub in my other point, which is 1, 11. y equals 11 when x equals 1, so a over 1 squared is just a plus k, so that's going to be equation 2. And then I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2 to solve them simultaneously. 20 minus 11 is 9 equals a minus a eliminates. That's why I did the subtraction. And 4, 4k minus k is 3k. So therefore, k equals 3. We're finding the values of a and k. So we've stated k equals 3. We need to find a, so we're going to go back into one of the other equations. So I'm going to be substituting k into, I'm going to go into equation 2. 11 equals a plus 3. So taking away 3 from both sides a equals 8. Okay. So again, find the values of a and k. So we've done that. If the question said find the rule, you would actually write out y equals 8 over x squared plus 3. Example 5, find the equation of the circle whose centre is at the point with coordinates 3, negative 2 and which passes through the point 1, 2. Okay, so let's think about this. So we've got 3, negative 2. So I'm just going to give us a rough sketch. So 3, negative 2, maybe about here. And it also, so that's the centre. It also goes through the point 1, 2, which is maybe about here. So if that's the centre and it passes through this point, the circle must be doing this, okay? So we've got the centre. To find the equation of the circle, we need the centre and the radius. So we're going to need to calculate the radius, which means distance between two points, yeah? Or you've got a little diagram here, you can just use Pythagoras, that's all the distance between two points is doing. So 1 across to 3, that's 2, negative 2, that's 4. Okay. So we can see there that r squared is 2 squared plus 4 squared, which is 4 plus 16, which is 20. And so r is root 20, which is 20 is 4 times 5, so root 4 times root 5 is 2 root 5. Okay, although bearing in mind for your equation of the circle, you just need to know what r squared is, and r squared is 20. So equation of the circle, x minus the x coordinate of the centre, which is 3 all squared, plus y minus the y coordinate of the centre, y minus minus 2 is y plus 2 all squared, and then equals r squared, which is 20. You can also go straight to this form first. And then just sub in your extra point. Let x equal 1 and y equal 2 to solve for r. 
um, and that can be another way that you can do it as well. You're essentially doing the same maths, whichever way around you decide to do it. Okay, example six, the final one. Find the equation of the circle whose center is at the point five, negative one, and which touches the y-axis. Okay, so if the center is at the point five, negative one, and we touch the y-axis, so the circle's just gonna touch here, okay, and that's the center, we immediately know what the center is, and just by thinking about what's happening, we also know that the radius is gonna be five because it's going to be the distance between the y-axis and this point here at the centre. So straight away, equation is x minus 5 all squared, that's the x-coordinate of the centre, plus y minus minus 1, so y plus 1 all squared, equals the radius squared, so that is 25. Okay, exercise 4e, all those questions, is the work for today.